I was pre-Title IX and there were no opportunities for girls, so my mother taught me tennis young. But I think we have one home movie in my life and it's of me swinging a tennis racket at the age of three. I was uh, five years old and uh, I attended uh, a summer camp. My cousin's husband was coaching there, so I took a summer camp and then uh, next thing later than this, I was there every summer. When I was two years old, my dad brought me to the tennis court with my sister and little me was dragging the racket around, trying to do my best. I was running around on the court and I think when it was my turn to hit that uh, I was fed 51 balls, I didn't hit one over the net. I tried to sign up for a little league and the boys, they had a basketball recreational program in my town and they said, no, you can't play, no, you can't play. So my mother was teaching me tennis. People started saying, you know, she's better than anyone around here. Maybe you should get her into tournaments. My mother had grown up in Springfield, Massachusetts, where there's this huge park, Forest Park, with a lot of clay courts, and she had learned to play there. And they had a big tournament there every year. So she took me to my grandparents' house, I stayed over, I played in my first 10 and under. They had doubles, singles, and mixed doubles, and I played all three at 10. My claim to fame is that I played uh, 49 tournaments in one year, so it's almost every weekend, it's almost every week a tournament, but I only won two matches, so. <laughs> I, that, that wasn't very good. Tennis is a very one-on-one, -on -one, individual, intense competition. It's not easy. It's very different than having a team five-on-five. Five. You're out there by yourself. There, there's really no one to blame except yourself. Sometimes, like, when you're a different athlete, you play, you're on a team, and sometimes your teammates don't play good on, like, tennis, you're out there by yourself, and you have to be a competitor. You have to problem-solve on your own, even though I wasn't that good of a mathematician. You're gonna lose points, and you're gonna lose points. I, I, I lost points in ways that were ugly, that I didn't like, that I felt, what was I thinking? I learned to just trust in myself and be patient with myself and be resilient. You can't take it for lightly because your parents invest in you, so you're almost like an investment. The friends that I grew up with, uh, that I still hang out with to, to this day, I lost contact with them, you know, after my senior year of high school, and that's when I really made the jump and got really serious. Only saw them on major holidays. I didn't see them for actually like two years. I didn't see, I didn't see any of them. My number one player ended up, uh, he was playing Davis Cup for Germany, so uh, I was able to hit with him uh, both years I was there, and then uh, that's how I got into playing the tournaments. And then in the 90s, they announced there was this, there's this huge gay sports movement. It's, it's international, and they were going to have the fourth annual Gay Olympics, which is called the Gay Games, because the Olympics wouldn't let us use the word, in New York City. And the tennis was going to be played at Flushing Meadows. So I was like, I'm going to go get medal at the Gay Games. Like, so I went and played at Flushing Meadows, and earned a, I won the bronze medal, I, I, you know? So that was a tennis dream that I could not have imagined as a kid. Playing Florian Meyer um, in uh, a tournament in uh, Germany, and when I was uh, I was 20 at the time, and he was only after the match that I figured I knew he was young, but he was only 14 at the time, and uh, he ended up beating me. But uh, then the next time I see him, you know, a couple years later, you know, he's on, you know center court to get us open.